somewhat safe. In 2004, during the presidential election between President Bush and Senator John Kerry, Senator Kerry was famous for something he said when he said, I was for the war before I was against it. Now, this is what really provoked me to start thinking a little bit more about our government. And it's really what led me down the path of losing all confidence in my government. Because the first question I wanted to ask him was, what kind of principles keep you guessing whether or not you're for a war or against a war? Where's the principles in that? Right about that same time, the reason it was really probably beginning to agitate me is because two of my buddies from my squad had been killed. So here's a senator who voted for troop action, and he can't figure out whether or not he's for a war, is beginning to fill up. So that's kind of what led me down this path. And, it, and it's nice to know he owned the people in the colonies. Back in 1776, when America was part of England, there was this doctrine of law known as the divine right of kings. Anybody heard of it? What, the, what this doctrine of law says is that the people do not have any rights whatsoever. In a monarchy, the only person who has any rights is the king. It is the monarch. The king has all That's sovereignty. why we're losing our freedom and our liberty today, because people don't know what to look for when it disappears. Take, for example, this. The Bill of Rights. It's a list of rights that the American people have, not rights given to us by our government, but rights that were just specifically enumerated for extra special protection. One of those rights is the Second Amendment. It says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now I'm going to explain real quick sovereignty and rights, and then I'm going to go back to the Second Amendment. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Freedom, sovereignty, liberty, is something that you have that is inherent in you, like Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration. Unalienable rights. We are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. An unalienable right, a right, or sovereignty, that's something that God has given you. And mankind cannot legislate that away. They can try to take away your freedom of speech, but they can't really do it. They can write something on a piece of paper, they can't really do it simply because your thoughts and your expression is something that is inherent in you. It cannot by any means be extracted from you. Whenever they try to legislate prayer out of schools, that's the, that's the biggest farce you ever would have heard of. You cannot take away my thoughts, my communication between my God and myself. You can, they can't do it. Sovereignty is this. If I own an acre of land and my neighbor owns an acre of land, because that's his land, if I want to walk across his land, I have to ask permission from the owner because he is sovereign over his land. He owns all the rights over his land. So if I decide that I can, get a, I can get to Walmart a little bit faster, if I walk across his land, maybe I'll go ask him and say, excuse me, neighbor, do you mind if I walk across your land so I can get to the store a little bit quicker? He tells me yes. So now I'm walking across my neighbor's land because it's a shortcut. And I'm doing this for months and months, maybe even years, but one day my neighbor is really angry about something. Maybe he has a fight with his wife, maybe his dog dies. Maybe he's just feeling sick. But he sees me walking across his land. My neighbor can come out and lawfully tell me to get off his land. He can do that because it's his land. He has the rights to it. He is sovereign over his land. And I have to get off. I can go back to my land and burn holes in it, or dig holes in it, burn all the trees and all the brush. I can build houses on it. Put a pool. I can do whatever I want to my land because I have the sovereignty of my land. If you were to look in Black's Law Dictionary, it would say that you are the chief supreme authority. Sovereignty. See, in America, Thomas Jefferson sent that letter to King George III and said, guess what? You're not sovereign over us. King George III, you cannot tell us what religion we have to have. You can't tell us what we can and can't say. Because those are things that are inherent to us. Those are things that we, that we decide for ourselves. Because that's freedom. That's liberty. So the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution says that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It happens to be the only amendment that specifically states, not just here's your right, but it also goes further and says, and this right shall not be infringed. It's the only one that says that. But it also happens to be the only so-called right that we have to ask permission to exercise. 
So if we have to ask permission to exercise a right, it's only because it's not really a right. The federal government has made a claim of ownership on our right, and they are trying to take it and hold it as their own. And they can get away with it as long as they make us ask permission to exercise our right. You don't have to ask, exercise permission from the government to go to church, do you? You don't, have, they, you don't pay taxes to go to church yet. You don't pay taxes to open up your mouth and talk. You don't have to ask the government for permission to speak out on certain issues. But for some reason, the Second Amendment is the one right that we have to ask permission to exercise, only because it's not really a right. We don't have that sovereignty because they're trying to take it away from us. That's the example I'm using to kind of explain what rights and sovereignty are. Freedom is more than being able to choose between Taco Bell and Burger King. Freedom is a deep philosophy that God's given to us, and our failure to acknowledge that is a failure to, failure to all mankind and our posterity. And it's the reason that America's in the shape that it's in right now. It's because people in America, unfortunately, we've been so preoccupied with the blessings that our freedom have given us that we have forgotten all about freedom itself and what it is. People are so misunderstood today. People are so misunderstood today when, they're, when they talk about what rights are. What is freedom? Freedom doesn't come from the government. According to the Declaration of Independence, a legitimate government has to meet two criteria. A legitimate government only exists to protect our rights. That governments are instituted to protect our rights. That's what the Declaration says. The second criteria is this. Government can only do that. It, government can only operate to protect our rights if and only if it does so with our consent. Right now, whenever any form of government becomes destructive to those ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Our government has already been altered, but it hasn't been by our choice. Our government has been altered by a ruling elite People who really do think that they're better than everybody else. Our senator, Senator Claire McCaskill, I'm not, I'm not afraid to name names, I'll tell you. Senator McCaskill went to a town hall meeting in Hillsborough, Missouri, and the crowd there, about, probably about 2,000 strong, overwhelmingly throwing forth a wall of voice and noise right at her, telling her that we don't want the health care bill. It was a bill at the time. And our senator had the nerve to look out over the crowd and shush everybody and then say, don't make me use my mother voice. This is somebody who is supposed to be a servant of the people. And there's a whole lot more to be said about what the role of the United States Senator is. And she's completely misguided. And I seriously doubt, and I feel, I am, I am extremely confident in saying this, that I seriously doubt she's ever even read the Constitution. She hasn't even read the bills that she voted for.